Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah, ala alihi wa ashabihi wa ala Subhanahu wa ta'ala, ala ala ma alamtana, ala ka anta alimu al-hakim Allahumma alimna ma anfa'una, wa anfa'na bima alamtana, wa anzidna ilman ya kareem This is our 29th lesson going through the book of Yaqut al-Nafis Fi madhhab ibn Idris, author by Ahmed bin Umar al-Shatiri We stopped at a segment of the author, Babu al-Salam Qal al-Musannif al-Salam, ulugatan al-Isti'ajal wa al-Taqdeem Salam, linguistically refers to bringing something forward Or hurrying something up وشرعاً بيع شيء موصوف في الذمة بلفظ السلام أو السلف. So there are three points here to the definition of السلام شرعاً. Number one, it's a form of transaction. It's a بيع. What are you selling? You're selling something which is موصوف في الذمة. I.e. something which is غير معين. Something which is not specific. Something which is not specified. It's essentially a type of بيع معدوم. Right? You're selling something that that isn't in existence yet. And the أصل that this is حرام usually. Right? To sell something which is ma'doom is not allowed. But this is one of the rukhas, this is one of the uh, dispensations that the shara has given. Babu, or bayru as salam. Good. And there are many ahadith that have come in this in this regard. And there is an ayah in the Quran which has been explained by Ibn Abbas to refer to as salam. Right? Good. Bayru shayim mawsufin fi adhimma. So this thing, this matter, which is not specific. Uh, that you want to sell is something which is what something which has been described and we'll see what what kind, what what kind of description is required later on in the lesson inshallah ta'ala and it's what fidhimma meaning it's upon the liability or upon the neck of the two individuals involved in this transaction the buyer will pay the uh, the amount immediately and the seller will go and find that uh, item that has been described for him and at a specified date he will be able to then give this item to the buyer I go to uh, I go to X and I say to X I want you to uh, bring for me on the 28th of the Hijjah, 100 kilograms of XYZ. 100 kilograms of XYZ type of uh, barley. Or 100 kilograms of XYZ type of rice. Or 100 kilograms of XYZ type of dates. And I give him a description of the things that I want. Now, this matter that I have described for him isn't yet in existence right now. I can't point to it. Okay. So I've essentially put it on his on his neck, i.e. the seller, to go and get for me this item that I described for him and to give it to me and you sell to, to transfer that to me at this specified date, the twenty eighth of the Hijjah. And I'm gonna pay you one hundred pounds now, immediately. This is a example of there, a seller. And I, and I use, of course, in the Nafi Madhab, as the author then says, Bilafdi salami awi salaf. I have to use this term of salam and salaf. Okay? And this is one of the three transactions that are, uh, its, or its validity is hinging, or its, valid, its, its validity hinges upon the usage of this specific term, lafd makhsus. And in this case, lafd salam awi salaf. Aslam tu. أو أسلفت. You have to use this terminology. عندنا في المذهب هو المعتمد. إلا of course there is some uh, disagreement on behalf of Ibn Hajar al-Haytami in his حاشية upon فتح الجواد. In which he says it doesn't matter. Uh, or we don't. We can't really uh, speci- We can't really um, uh, constrict the level to just these two. أسلمت أو أسلفت. Rather, عدم انحصار السلم في هذين اللفظين كما قال. لانعقاده بكنايات البيع بنية السلم وبلفظ قبلت so he adds extra terminology like I accept or كنايات البيع which takes the intent with the intent of السلم so يصح البيع even with it if a person doesn't come with السلم لكن this قول is not the strongest قول in the in the مذهب رافض المعتمد is you have to come with what لفظ السلم أو السلف like in مكاح you have to come with لفظ أنكحت you can't just say ملكت مثلا likewise in الكتابة عقد الكتابة بين العبد و سيدي هي. نعم. 
So these three points are important when it comes to bay, uh, when it comes to the definition of as-salam. Bay'u shay'in fi mawsuf, bay'u shay'in mawsuf fi dhimmati bi lafz as-salam aw aw as-salaf. Good. Now, and as I said, yuqal lahu as-salafu aywa. Man aslama aw aslafa. You can say both. And so the reason why it's called uh, or the reason why it's called as-salam lughatan is because of the isti'jal that is present. Where is the isti'jal? In the payment, the payment is a down payment essentially, right? You pay, you pay immediately, right? Istajal rasil mali wa taqdimihi, and you bring that forward. As for the Muslim fi, i.e., the sila itself, it is delayed, right? You get the product at a later date, but you have to pay up uh, immediately. That's where the uh, term salam and the linguistic notion, notion of the term salam comes into comes into play. Arkanu salam. What are the pillars of salam? أركان السلام خمسة. There are five pillars when it comes to السلام. المسلم والمسلم إليه والمسلم فيه ورأس المال والصيغة. Five points. The first point is المسلم أي المشتري. The buyer. ومسلم إليه أي the seller. ومسلم فيه أي the سلعة. The item itself. The product. ورأس المال أي الثمن. The price. وصيغة أي لفظ السلام أو السلف. These five points are needed. Let's give an example and extract from that example these five points. You have myself, person A, and you have person B. I go to person B, and I say to person B, you are to get me, right? I أسلفتو أو أسلمتو. Uh, you come with these two terminologies. I beloved as salam al as salaf. I يعني أسلم لك. I give you two hundred pounds. I give you how much? Two hundred pounds. حالا right now. For you to get me two hundred kilograms of barley. And you are to give me this 200 pounds or 200 kilograms of barley on the 13th of the Hijjah in, uh, in, uh, uh, in warehouse X. In warehouse X. So let's give the example again. I give you 200 pounds for you to get me. 200 kilograms of barley and transfer it to me on the 13th of Hijjah at warehouse X. So who's the Muslim here? I am the Muslim. I'm the buyer. Who is the Muslim ilay? The Muslim ilay is the seller, person B. Al Muslim fi is the sila, which is 200 kilograms of barley. Rasul mal is a 200 pounds that I put down as down payment. And the sila is the term aslamtu aw aslaftu lak. Aslamtu ilayka. Right, so I use the term Aslam to Aslaf. Okay, so these are the five pillars that Aslam is uh, is built upon. The author then says, Shurutu Sihati Salam. The conditions that are required for the validity of a Salam contract. Shurutu Sihati Salam is Yalat and Allah Shurut al Bayer. Sitta. So, of course, Shurut al Bayer are also applicable here because Salam is a form of Bayer. We define Salam as Bayu. Bay'u. So all the ahkam of bay' come into play here. And then we add on to that extra conditions. And there are six extra conditions. The first condition, حُلُولُ رَأْسِ الْمَالِ حُلُولُ رَأْسِ الْمَالِ It must be an immediate payment. The payment from behalf of the, of the buyer must be immediate. You have to pay it immediately. فَلَوْ عَقَدَاهُ مُؤَجَّلًا وَتَقَابَضَا فِي الْمَجْلِسِ لَمْ يَصِحَّ So if you, meaning let's say myself and person B, were to come to an agreement to delay the payment. Even if the payment is eventually given. مثلا, I say to you, here is 200 pounds. I'm going to pay it to you in half an hour. I'm going to pay you or wire you or transfer you the money in half an hour. So there's a, delayment in, there's a delay in the payment. صح? Uh, for you to get for me 100 kilograms of dates, for which, which will be transferred to X warehouse on the 12th of the Hijjah or 13th of the Hijjah. 
We say here, despite them agreeing to delay, or because of them agreeing to delay the payment in this contract, even though the money eventually reached the, uh, the, the, the seller, half an hour later, whilst we're still in the Majlis, right? we say, because of the fact that you uh, mentioned this tawqeet, or this delay, this salam contract is invalid. It's obligatory for Ra'as al-Mal to be given off immediately, right, in the contract. There can't be any delay, no hulul at all. So that's the first condition, hulul Ra'as al-Mal. The second condition, وَتَسْلِيمُهُ fi al-Majlis. The, uh, the payment must be, must be done in the Majlis, meaning the seller must be able to catch or receive the, uh, the payment, i.e. essentially uh, what we call uh, as part of the uh, pillars, Ras al-Mal. He must receive that Ras al-Mal in the Majlis, in the Majlis. فَلَوْ عَقَدَاهُ حَالًا وتفرق أو ألزم العقد قبل القبض بطل العقد. So if, مثلا, the two sides say we're going to immediately transfer the payment right now, and they separate before تقابل takes place, we say this عقد is not valid. Or مثلا, they perform تخير. We spoke about تخير in the previous lesson. قبل القبض before taking the uh, ownership of the of the of the Ra's al Mal. Batar al Aqd. Inda, of course, we said for this last point, Inda, Inda al Ramli. Amma Inda ibn Hajar, la 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 yabdul. Kama marra ma'ana fi the Dars al Sadiq. We mentioned this in the previous lesson. That same hukum comes into play here again. How al Zam al Aqd, Qabr al Qabri, Batar al Aqd, Inda al Ramli, wa lam yabdul Inda, Inda al Haytabi. Good. So that's the uh, second condition. What is the muhu fi al Majlisi? The third condition. وَبَيَانُ مَكَانِ التَّسْلِيمِ This condition, بَيَانُ مَكَانِ التَّسْلِيمِ To clarify the place in which you're going to, uh, in which you're going to give me what I asked. So in the example we gave, I asked him, أَسْلَنْتُ لَكَ أَوْ أَسْلَنْتُ إِلَيْكَ مِئَةِ دِينَارِ To, for you to go and get me 200 kilograms of specific type of barley, or يعني, a type of barley which isn't yet in existence, but you have to go and get it for me. And I've, ex I've, I've described to you the whatever it is that I require from that. And I want you to transfer it to me or give it to me, submit it to me at warehouse X. At warehouse X. On the 13th of the Hijjah. This, 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 uh, this clarification of the place in which the transfer is going to occur. Or the place in which the uh, product is going to be sent to or submitted at. This only becomes a condition if certain conditions of if certain points are met. The author says here. وَبَيَانُ مَكَانِ التِّسْلِيمِ إِنْ أَسْلَمَ بِمَحَلٍ غَيْرِ صَالِحٍ لَهُ أَوْ كَانَ الْمُسْلَمُ فِيهِ مُؤَجَّلًا وَلِحَمْلِهِ إِلَى مَكَانِ الْعَقْدِ مُؤْنَةً طيب When it comes to إشتراط مكان التسليم We can divide it into two parts The first part is The place where the contract is being drawn up Is it a place which is suitable for the submission of such a product or not if it is not a place that is suitable for submission of this product then you have to specify the place in which the submission of this product will occur so let's say we're in a lift me and person b we're in the lift that's where the place of the contract is and i want him to get me 200 kilograms of barley 200 kilograms of barley this is not a place that is sound for us to conduct submission of such a such an item or such a product so we say here you have to specify in this contract where you're going to submit the the product however if the place where you are performing the contract is actually suitable for the submission of the product then we can further divide that into two parts does bringing this product to the buyer require spending does it require mu'na? Does it require nafaka? Do I need to spend money? Do I need to spend or expend efforts in order to bring this item to the place where the contract has been held or not? If, if the uh, sil'a, the product, requires from me to expend effort, to expend wealth, to expend money, to bring it to the place 
of the uh, of the uh, of the contract, then we look at two further points. The first point is: is the submission of this product immediate, immediate or delayed? If the submission of this product is immediate, halan, I don't have to mention the specific place. However, if it is delayed, then I have to mention the place where the submission of the product will occur. And if I don't require any effort to be expended, if there is no effort that requires expending, there's no money that needs to be spent, there's no nafaqa that needs to be applied in order to transfer this or submit this product to the buyer, then لا يشترط فيه التعيين. So there's this tafsil in, in place. Okay? وبيان مكان التسليم إن أسلم محل غير صالح له. أي if the محل is غير صالح, لا بد يشترط فيه تعيين المكان. That's point number one. أو كان المسلم فيه مؤجلا ولحمله إلى مكان العقد مؤنة. المسلم فيه the product it's being delayed meaning yeah, the, 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 it's not حالا but عندنا في المذهب السلم يقع حالا مؤجلا whilst the, the, the down payment must be immediate the actual item being submitted can either be immediate meaning I want you to bring 200 kilograms of barley right now or I want you to bring me 200 kilograms of barley in a delayed at a, at a further or at a later date both are valid so here, if the Muslim fee, i.e. the sila, is mu'ajjala and carrying it to the place of the contract is something that requires effort, requires you to spend money, then we say, yushtaratu fihi, bayanu makan, we have to clarify, makan, at-tasli. But if it is, methalan, halan, i.e. the Muslim fee is something which is immediate payment, or sorry, immediate uh, transfer, or immediate submission, and uh, yani in this case, it doesn't matter whether it requires, uh, and of course, yani, uh, there is mu'na, then we say, لا يشترط فيه التعيين. أما, if the mahal is, or yani, حمل المتاع, حمل السلع, حمل المسلم فيه, doesn't require any mu'na, لا يشترط التعيين, whether it's halan أو مؤجلا. Irrespective of whether, be, whether the submission is halan أو مؤجلا, if the mahal does i.e. the mahal muslim fee we don't need to bring this muslim fee or we don't need to expend money or effort to bring in this uh, uh, this uh, this product for submission to the buyer if that doesn't require any effort right and of course مكان العقد صالح للتسليم of course then لا يشترط فيه التعيين لا يشترط فيه التعيين however if the mahal al muslim fee requires mu'na to bring it and it is مؤجل not حالا then we say يشترط التعيين وبيان مكان التسليم إن أسلم بمحل غير صالح له أو كان المسلم فيه مؤجلا ولحمله إلى مكان العقد مؤنة هذا that makes sense إن شاء الله تعالى the author then says والقدرة على التسليم وقت وجوبه so remember we said that we have five pillars المسلم فيه أي the sil'a itself. You, as the uh, Muslim, i.e. the one who is submitting the uh, the uh, the payment, as a down payment, immediate payment, you're going to expect this product at a certain date. صح? Like in the example we gave. Uh, I am paying £200 now for you on the 13th of Hijjah to transfer to me 200 kilograms of barley to warehouse X. So, uh, the... Ba'ir, or al Muslim ilayh, has to have the ability to actually transfer this item to you when the obligation comes, i.e., that date, Sa'ith al Hijjah. But if we're talking about an item that is still non existent on that day, then we look at the item itself. Now, this item is it an item that is uh, capable of being submitted on that day? Is it capable of being submitted on that on that day? Sometimes you might have a product which the time in which you told me to give it to you, it doesn't exist. Or it's not going to be in in the market at that time. Rather it's in the market at another time. For example, back in the day, certain dates wouldn't be able to you won't be able to find them during the winter. But you can find them during the summer. So if I come to you and I say to you, I want you to give me I want you to transfer to me uh, on the 30th of the Hijjah, which is, let's say, in the winter time. 
I want you to transfer to me 200 kilograms of these dates that are non-existent during the winter. Because they don't grow during the winter, they grow during the summer. Right? And I'm telling you to give it to me during the, the winter. This is something which I don't have the ability to, and I don't, I don't have the ability to submit it to you on that date because it's not, it's not going to be in existence during that time. So this will not fall under Bayr as salam because there is no qudrah on the tashreem at the time The shart is there is khalal in this in this shart. Okay, good. And there is one situation which we can add, which is I do have the ability to, or there is that ability to actually submit this item, but something outside of my power or outside of my uh, ability or outside of my control took place which prevented me from submitting the item to you on this date but then I said to person B I want you to transfer to me 200 kilograms of barley on the 13th Dhul Hijjah at X date and here is Aslamtu Laka Hadal Mal Aslamtu Laka Mi'ate Dinar for that so I gave him 200 dinars for that. The day came now, and the buyer comes to me, or the seller comes to me, and says to me, uh, Fulan, uh, I am unable to submit this product for you, because our crops were destroyed, or because uh, we were unable to harvest properly. Here now, I have two options. And I'm essentially given khiyar, the choice. And that is to either wait, okay, choose another date, delay it further, or I can say give me back my, my money. And this option is yeah, uh, not immediate. You, you don't have to make a choice immediately. So then I can say, okay, let's wait it out for a few weeks. Once a few weeks comes and you're still uh, not going to get your product, you can then just say we're going to cut the app now. We're going to end it. Give me back my, my money. He gives you back your money and you go your separate ways. So this condition is important On the moment or the time That it becomes obligatory for you to now submit the, To submit the item And that's of course the date that you agreed upon Right whether it be halan or awajala Wallahu ta'ala alam The author then says وَالْعِلْمُ لِلْعَاقِدَيْنِ وَعَدْلَيْنِ بِالْأَوْصَافِ الَّتِي يَخْتَلِفُ بِهَا الْغَرَضُ اِخْتِلَافًا ظَاهِرًا We mentioned that you have to specify the uh, what it is that you actually want, right? So when I say to you 200 kilograms of barley, I'm going to specify what kind of barley I'm looking for, right? If I'm looking for a certain item, uh, I need to specify that item so that we are both aware of what it is that we're going to eventually transact on. صح? Because this thing is ma'doom, it doesn't exist yet. So we need to provide a concise description, a precise description that will allow the seller to go and get the product that you want, the way that you want it, and bring it to you so that you can then uh, take it and yani, uh, be happy with the deal that you have made. So, if you have uh, a, uh, a, an item which there can be wide elements of ikhtilaf based upon the descriptions you give, right? So if I give you a certain description there's a big leeway here, right? In which the person might come back or the seller might come back with a product completely different to what you had uh, mentioned. In this case, we need to have total knowledge from both sides of the deal, al meaning the buyer and the seller, wa'adlini, and two reliable individuals and added onto that as well. So there are four people here. al wa'adlini. They need to have knowledge of what? Bil awsaf the descriptions, right? That causes differences between غرض and apparent difference. And that يختلف بها الغرض اختلافا ظاهرا. Meaning that those things which there is اختلاف but it's يعني very rare or it's very small, very minute. يختلف ذلك. We're not talking about that. We're talking about those things that are clear cut and apparent. Such that if there was a خلاف then there would be what major خلاف. Okay. If I say to you, مثلا, I want you to bring me two hundred kilograms of barley. And I want the body to be of this texture, of this kind of thing, of this kind of that. And it's what things that are, if you don't bring it, then it'll be ikhtilaf zahir. 
but there are certain things, certain points that if you don't, if you don't bring it, it doesn't add major difference. There's no major impact. Okay, good. So in those situations or those descriptions that can cause major impact on the product that that the seller will bring to you, there needs to be knowledge of that specific description that you have given on both sides of the deal, i.e. the buyer and the seller, and in addition to them, adlaini, adlaini. Okay. Now, this Adelaine, when we say Adelaine, we don't mean by it two specific individuals, i.e. X and Y. La. Rather, we mean by it Adelaine. Two reliable persons. Not two specific reliable persons. Why? Because if there is any tanazur, if there is any khilaf, any argumentation that breaks out between the two sides, we need to come with these uh, reliable individuals who can come and say, we can bear testimony that the Awsaf mentioned here are uh, Awsaf that we have knowledge of that is required for such a uh, such an item for such an for such an item now where can we get these um, uh, Adlain from we get it from any Adlain that are present from Makan or Tisri the place where the where the submission of the uh, of the item occurs up until Masafat Al-Adwa up until Masafat Al-Adwa as the author says Al-Muradu أن يوجد أبدا في غالب الأزمنة في محل التسليم فما فوقه إلى مسافة العدوى ممن يعرفها عدلان أو أكثر. Meaning two, there has to be two reliable individuals who know this product in, inside and out and are able to figure out what are the types of أوصاف that are required to produce such a product with those specifications that we mentioned or with those specifications that the, that the, uh, that the buyer mentioned. Now these two عدلان must be present in a distance between Makan al-Taslim and Masafat al-Adwa. Masafat al-Adwa is the distance that it takes for a person to leave his home during the early part of the day and to come back during the early part of the night. Meaning, if you were to leave your home during the early part of the day and walk to a distance that will enable you to, when you walk back, to reach your home at, uh, at the early stages of the, of the night. That is, that is Masafat al-Adwa. And this is a condition that is required for awsaf descriptions as for al ajal as the author and says wa wa inna maktufiya bi ma'rifati al ajal min al aqidayn aw adlayn wa lam yaktafi bi dhalika huna li anna al jahalata hunaka raji'at ila al ajal wa huna ila al ma'qud alayhi fajaza an yahtamil an yahtamil hunaka ma la yahtamil huna ma ma'na hadha kalam when it comes to ishtirat al ajal we said one of the conditions uh, when it is mu'ajjal that you uh, that, يعني, we said that bay'u salam can be what haran or mu'ajjala can be immediate or deferred now when you defer it to the date in which you decide to defer it to here we only require knowledge of this from either al-aqidayn aw adlayn aw adlayn so we have al-aqidayn wa adlayn ishtirat ma'rifat sifat sifat al-muslim fi amma ishtirat ma'rifat ajal salam then this requires only عاقدين أو عدلين مثلا and the reason why it's or and not and is because the جهالة the ignorance or the element of unknown here returns back to the أجل itself and not the صفات and not the أوصاف مثلا I say to uh, I say to uh, uh, my brother B that I want to uh, I'm going to give you 200 pounds أسلمت لك 100 pounds 100 pounds 100 pounds for you to, uh, for you to get me on the thirteenth of the Hijjah, two hundred grams of, whatever, two hundred kilograms of barley, مثلا. And I said thirteenth of the Hijjah. Now thirteenth of the Hijjah is a known date. It's a known date by me and, uh, by me and, uh, 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 Fulan, I B, right? But because we're in the twenty first century and people generally act on the what we call the uh, the Gregorian calendar and not so much the Hijri calendar, it may not be known to him when the 13th Dhul Hijjah is. Right? So, there is what? Jahala of the Ajal. 13th Dhul Hijjah. Yeah, I know 13th Dhul Hijjah, but what, what, what does it correspond to? Is it the 25th of August, the 25th of August, 23rd of August? Yani, it might, there, might, there might be variations with the, with the uh, Gregorian calendar that I'm used to. And the Ajal here, we said, is in the Hijri calendar, not in the Gregorian calendar. And so here, knowledge of such Ajal, uh, meaning knowledge of that, it only requires either Adlain or Aqidain. Adlain or Aqidain to know. 
And as long as two adils or the aqidin know, then there's no problem in that. Right? So the aqidin may not necessarily know. Me and my brother may not necessarily know when exactly is the 13th of Hijjah because we both go off the Gregorian calendar. We don't have really knowledge of the Hijri calendar. As long as there are adlain who know that the 13th of Hijjah corresponds to X date in the Gregorian calendar, then there is no problem here. لأن الجهالة ترجع إلى ماذا؟ ترجع إلى إلى الأجل لا إلى المسلم فيه. طيب. I hope that makes sense inshallah. تعالى. The author then says وذكرها في العقد بلغة يعرفها العاقدان وعدلان. When we say these أوصاف these أوصاف must be mentioned in a language that can be understood by the عاقدان both sides of the contract and also عدلان. So these أوصاف these descriptions must be mentioned in a language that both of us speak, meaning I and the other side of the deal speak, and also to Adlan also speak. So we can bring two reliable persons who can also speak that language and understand the awsaf that are being mentioned clearly. طيب. So if I speak Mandarin, and I mention the awsaf in Mandarin, and the, uh, the, uh, the other side of the deal doesn't understand Mandarin, then we say this term is not valid. And if both sides and if both sides of the contract understand the awsaf in Mandarin, but there is no Adlan in the region of Makan at Asim to Masafat Al Adwa who uh, understand Mandarin, right? And uh, uh, we don't have anyone that can understand Mandarin in this region, right? Uh, at all, right? Then uh, this when when you when you mention the Awsaf, you have to mention it in the language that Al Aqidan no and Adlan no. Right? So you can't speak a language in which only you and the other uh, contractor know. Right? And no one else knows in that in that region between Makan and Sintu Masafat Al Adwa. Wadikruha filakadi bilugatin yarifuha al aqidani wa wa anla. Good. So you have to make sure that when you are speaking, so you can't be making up your own languages, right? And and making up descriptions like that. Right? You and your brother speak a, يعني, some language that is unique between you two and nobody else knows the language. Like, you can't do that. The Osaf must be known in a language that is spoken by at least Aqidan and Adlan. Allah Ta'ala A'lam And with that the author Essentially concluded the chapter And he mentioned the surah As is one of the unique features of this kitab The form of the salam He says here Surah al-salami An yaqula Zayd ni Amr Zayd says to Amr Aslamtu ilayka Hathihi al-mi'ata al-dinari Fi abdin zinji Ibn khamsi sinina Tuluhu khamsatu ashbarin Tusallimuhu li Gurrata shahri kada Fi baladi kada Fa yaqulu Amrun qabiltu So he gave the example of How a salam contract would look like Aslamtu ilayka He came with the sigha Love al-salam هذه المئة دينار. This one hundred dinar. This one hundred dinar. So it's what حلول حلول ال 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 الثمن حلول الثمن حلول رأس المال. Right. Good. في عبد زنجي عبد زنجي المسلم فيه أي السلعة the product أي a black slave a زنجي slave. Now he's going to give you أوصاف أوصاف. He's giving to you what أوصاف. ابن خمس سنين five year old. طوله خمسة أشبار. His his height is five. Five أشبار. تسلمه لي. So he's given you the height information. He's given you the the year the age that he wants. He's given you أوصاف specific descriptions that can be understood by the two sides of the contract and also عدلان two reliable individuals. تسلمه لي غرة شهري كذا في بلد كذا. You are going to submit to me this عبد on the beginning of X month in X nation or in X place or in X land. And then Amr says, "Qabil to I accept this contract, right?" And then in the Hamish, the author mentioned how he would write it in a in a contract situation. This is it. يعني in a spoken form, that's how he would do it. But in a writing form, you say Alhamdulillah wa bad. فقد أسلم زيد إلى عمر مئة دينار. Of course, يعني في سيرة تين فون تدرو أب كونتراكت and write it down. You write it in the form the author mentioned in the uh, in the Hamish. طيب and you can read it yourself إن شاء الله تعالى. طيب هذا. والله أعلم أسنت لفهمت عند الكت عند ذي الشابتة، أنسو وصطبه بإذن الله سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته.